Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and we're going to take the next few minutes to learn all about the new features and enhancements to the vector tools in Photoshop CS6. So let's begin by selecting one of our shape tools. I'm actually going to choose the custom shape tool. And you'll notice up in the upper left hand corner, we no longer have those icons. They were a little bit too difficult for people to figure out what they were. Now you just get to pick from the list as to whether or not you want to make a shape layer, if you want to make a path, or if you want to make a pixel base layer. So we're going to start with a shape layer. And I'll move over here to the right so that we can select our custom shape that we're going to use. And then I'll click and drag out my shape. Now, I'm holding down the space bar in order to reposition that shape, and when I get it where I want it, we'll go ahead and let go. Now, let's take a look at our Layers panel, because our shape layers look different. It used to be that you would have a fill layer plus a vector mask. Well, because we have added the ability to add a stroke and a fill to our shape layers, you'll now notice that they are represented as just one item in the Layers panel. Also, if you have a lot of shape layers and you click on a different shape layer, you'll notice that that shape layer is automatically highlighted in the image area. And if I were to select the Direct Selection tool, I'll just tap the keyboard shortcut A. If I click on any of these other shapes, you'll notice that that shape layer is automatically selected in the Layers panel. This right here is the little icon that represents that it's a shape layer. And you'll also notice that the shape takes up the majority of the thumbnail. So instead of showing you this little teeny tiny shape in relationship to the entire document bounds, what we've done in CS6 is we've actually enlarged the shape so that you can clearly see that on your Layers panel. All right, so let's take a look up here in the Options bar, you'll notice that we have a swatch that we can click, and we can set our fill not only to any solid color, but we could also set it to a gradient, as well as a pattern. Let's go back for now to a solid color, and if I want to choose a color that's not in the swatches right here, we can click on the color picker, and I can either select from the color picker here, or I can select from anywhere in my image area. As soon as I click OK, we'll see that fill, and Photoshop is also going to keep track of my recently used colors. All right, let's move over to the Stroke option, and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit before we add this stroke to make sure that we can see what we're doing. So just like the Fill option, we have the ability to stroke with a solid color, with a gradient, or with a pattern. Let's keep it simple right now, and I'll just choose a solid color. You'll notice that I can change the point size, making it thicker or thinner, and I have a variety of additional options that I can change. By clicking here, you can see that I can change the alignment. So right now it happens to be stroking on the inside of the path, but we can change that to the center of the path or even to the outside of the path. And we can change the caps and the corners, and we even have more options if we click here. So for example, if I wanted to make this a dashed line, I could start right up here with the presets that we have, or I can come down and customize this. So again, let's set it to the outside, and then we can change or add additional dashes and gaps. So I could type in 6 or 2, and you can see how this is changing. They're also square at the edge, but if I wanted to make them round, I could. And as soon as I've created something that I like, we can click Save, and it becomes a new preset that I can then access from the list here. Or when I click OK, you'll notice that it also appears here. Of course, you can always free transform your paths, but it's quite nice to also have the option to change the width and height right across here in the Options bar. All right, I'm going to take off that stroke for a moment and just zoom out a little bit so that we can take a look at what happens when I click and drag a second path. Now, if I tap the U key, that gives me my Shape tool, and I click and drag, you'll notice on the Layers panel that by default, I'm going to get a second path. And that's because of this option right here. You can see that it's set to New Layer, so every time I draw a shape, it's going to create a new layer. If I don't want that to happen, let's tap the Delete key and get rid of that shape. What I need to do is change this so that I can combine multiple shapes on a single layer. So in this case, I might want to subtract from the shape. I'll select my Ellipse tool, and then I can click and drag in order to kind of punch holes in the shape that I've already created. So it's very easy to combine different shapes together. 
Now, one of the things that you might think is missing is the ability to add your styles. And of course, you've always got your styles panel, or you could add a single layer effect down here at the bottom of the layers panel. So for example, if I just wanted to add a simple drop shadow, we could do that. I'll click and drag in my image area to separate that, and we'll just make it a little bit softer here by changing the size. So even though the styles options are no longer on the options bar, it's very easy to add those. And of course, all of the shapes that you have on a single layer will have the same stroke and fill attributes. And if you've assigned these attributes to a single shape, but you had a lot of shape layers and you wanted to assign those to all of them, all you need to do is right mouse click on the shape layer. And you can see that I can copy my shape attributes, and then I could paste them to another layer. But don't forget, by default, when I preload all of these options for my shape, when I create additional shapes, those shapes will have the same attribute. So let's make sure that we're creating a new layer. And let me just drag out a shape here. And you can see that it's got the same attribute as the previous shape. Another really great thing that we've done, let me just draw a few more shapes here. You can see that in my layers panel, I have these two shape layers. If I wanted to put them onto the same layer, I can select multiple shape layers in Photoshop CS6, and I can merge them down by using Command or Control E, and they remain vector shapes. So in previous versions, that would actually rasterize those shape layers, but now they'll remain vector shapes. And if I wanted to change the color like I could in previous versions, I mean, I, I can always go to the Fill option, but you could just double click on the thumbnail for the shape in the Layers panel, and you could change the color that way if you wanted to. Now, if you do have more than one shape on a single layer, and you wanted to separate them so that they're on different layers, then I'll tap the A key in order to grab my Direct Select tool, and I'll select the shape that I want to lift to its own layer, and then I can use the option Layer, New, and then Shape Layer, either via Copy, or via cut to separate those. And again, we still leave them as shape layers. We're not rasterizing them. One of the most requested features for shape layers, especially for people who are doing web work, is the ability to kind of force Photoshop to make sure that when you draw a straight line, that it's that straight line is on a pixel. Let me just delete these two layers, and I'll show you what I mean. If I select my Rectangle Shape tool, and I click and drag out, you'll notice that there's no anti-aliasing on the edge. And that's because in Photoshop CS6, if I go to my Preferences, you can see that there's a preference to snap your vector tools and transforms to the pixel grid. So I won't accidentally get that misalignment. If I uncheck this option and click OK, and then I use my Rectangle Shape tool and click and drag out a rectangle. If I use the keyboard shortcut Command-H to hide that, and we zoom in on this area, there might be a little bit of an anti-aliased edge. In fact, if I zoom in really close, we can see that. So that's what that new preference prevents from happening. Now, if I want to turn off the preference, but kind of apply this option on a per layer basis, then I can turn on the option right here to align edges. And did you notice how all of a sudden that anti-aliased edge just disappeared? Because Photoshop actually snapped it to the pixel grid in the layer. Well, as you can see, there have been many new features as well as feature enhancements made to both the vector tools and the shape layers in Photoshop CS6. My name is Julianne Koss. Thanks for watching.